Hey y'all, I just want to share a quick thought while I'm waiting on Julie to get out of the store. And um, I'll start in in Matthew 16. And um, I, I'll tell you, be honest, with you, the first time I, I heard this idea, this thought, this, this little nugget pulled out um, from the story of, of Jesus' arrest leading to his crucifixion, um, it, it struck me, it struck me right here. And, and I want to share it with you. I think it might be relevant in the time that we're facing right now. Um, but in, in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus was speaking to the disciples, uh, warning them about the doctrine of the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And uh, in, that, in that chapter, he asks the disciples, who do you say that I am? And the disciples respond and um, I guess maybe Jesus felt at that moment that the disciples' faith was was strong enough to bear what he was about to tell them. And then in the next verses, he tells them that uh, you know he has to face some suffering, and he's going to be killed, and he's going to die, and and he's going to be buried and raise again on the third day. He tells them that, and you know, like like Peter does throughout scripture the very next verse you find him i can imagine him blurting this out i can imagine him uh very passionately saying this he says uh, be it not so you know uh, god forbid uh, that'll never happen to you and, and i and i certainly can understand peter's emotion and and that his his responding this way peter obviously loved jesus and maybe felt a responsibility to protect him uh so he responds in that way um, but let's fast forward a little bit to, uh, you know, there was a time there where Jesus was in the garden. Judas had already set in motion his plan to, to, to approach Jesus. He was going to kiss him, and that would let the guards know which one of them uh, to arrest. And, uh, and he does that. And then in John chapter 18, I like the account of John because it uses uh, the name of Peter here. And the other gospels don't. But John chapter 18, verse 10. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. Um, and then the other gospels even say that, you know, Jesus picked up the ear and actually, I guess, put it back on or healed the man. Um, Malchus, it was, that, that, that Peter struck. And I can... What, what, what Christ said, what Jesus said after this it was important. He says in verse 11, Then Jesus said unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. And I think about a scene from the gladiator where uh, the guards have surrounded Maximus and, and Quintus, I think it was, yells out, Sheathe your swords! Sheathe your swords! Now, I don't think... I don't know if Jesus said it quite like that to Peter, but that's what he's saying to Peter. He's saying, sheathe your sword. Put it away. And um, what I want to share with you is this idea that Jesus is telling Peter, this isn't something I need you to do. I don't need you to get out your sword. I don't need your protection. I don't need you to intervene. I don't need you to fix it. Just sheathe your sword. And it was a message, I'm telling you, that I needed, and unfortunately, I still need now. I need to hear from God. I need Him to tell me, Derek, sheathe your sword. Do not intervene. This isn't something that you can handle. I don't need this. Sheathe your sword. I've got it taken care of. Um, and I think what you know, Peter's reaction obviously had a lot of motion, emotion behind it, and and I'm sure maybe came from from a, from a uh, from from the heart and and he meant well but Jesus is telling him sheathe your sword don't intervene there's nothing you can do here you know and he follows it up you know he says the cup which my father hath given me shall I not drink it and and we understand that that Jesus had been trying to communicate to these guys the path that, that the, the the father's will for him and what he was going to have to do but uh, you know it may have never really sunk in to the disciples and until until far later you know after the resurrection but um i just think that given the crisis that so many people are facing right now and let's not kid ourselves it, this is a season of crisis but uh, season of seasons of crisis just don't happen when there's a pandemic uh, there, there's all there's always uh, seasons of crisis 
facing uh, people and facing Christians. And I don't know what those are. They may be they might be financial. You know, they might be a crisis in your marriage. It might be a crisis with your kids. It might be a crisis of health. I don't know what they are, but they're seasons of crisis that we face. And I wonder sometimes if God doesn't say to us, sheath your sword. Because if you're like me, the moment you, you, you see crisis coming, your sword's out. I'm out. I'm ready. I'm ready to attack it. That's me. Because I want to fix it. I want to intervene. I want it to stop. I, I, I can handle it on my own. I'm a man. Um, and I think often, often God looks at me and says, just sheath your sword, Derek sheath your sword. I know what's happening now. I knew what happened back then. And I know what's going to happen after this. Sheath your sword. That's hard to do. It's hard to do. It's hard to do in a time of crisis uh, to just sheath your sword. Just wait. I'm in control. I've got it. Just sheath your sword. So I, I want you to consider that. Um, like I said, it, it that, that meant a lot to me. It's something that I've considered and been thinking a lot about right now um, in this time. And there's some things in my life I, I'm facing that I think God is just saying, sheath your sword, Derek. You don't have to do anything. This isn't something for you. I've got it. Sheath your sword.